<laughs> Look, it doesn't get the publicity of Fraser. It's nowhere near as big. But Morton Island, what an absolute treat. I stood on the beach today. I could see the lights of Brisbane. And yet, I feel like I'm a million miles away. This place is absolutely unreal. I'm here with the Motley crew. Hey! We're having an absolutely fantastic time. Why don't you see exactly what we got up to? Because this place is... Unbelievable. That was pretty good. It is unbelievable. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Did you think anything less of me if I went from halfway? Whoa! <laughs> Holy heck, where are you going? You're going under! Holy heck! <laughs> Let's go and have a look what it looks like under the water. Morton Island, how good is this? Yep! <laughs> If you're into tough four-wheel driving and epic campsites, then this is the video for you. And I've also got cracking news too. Get 10% off store-wide at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter. That's 10% off winches, spotlights, and heaps more gear. Just keep an eye out for the exclusive discount code in this video. And of course, enjoy the adventure. The MyCat Ferry is owned and operated by Morton Island Adventures and leaves from the Port of Brisbane six days a week. Jamie, mate, you are shocking straight into the coffee. There you go. Thanks for that. So, um, you guys camping on the western side? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Jamie's just getting a couple of camping ideas from the MyCat staff. Nice one, buddy. I'm off to check out the rest of the ship. Look at this. Gil. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Good, good to see you. Good. How do you know what's going on here? I don't. <laughs> Gil, I'm always interested in a bit of local knowledge with regards to the tracks places we go. What are the tracks like over there at the moment? Do they vary much in condition? They do. Yeah. They do. yeah. At the moment the tracks are very, very soft. Soft. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't had a lot of rain on the island, obviously, anywhere. Gil went on to talk about more tracks and he also gave us some really valuable advice on tyre pressures. He also tipped us off on some of the hot spots that the island has to offer. Well, I don't know how you know what you're doing up here, mate. There's more dials and buttons than a spacecraft, but we're heading in the right direction because I believe that's Morton over there. No. That's not. No, 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 no. That's Whip Sundays. <laughs> oh, goodness me. <laughs> I didn't think I was wrong. I'm sure that's the island, but I'm pretty positive I've got it right this time. The ferry ride takes just over an hour, and it's a really picturesque trip. Look, I reckon it's on the ferry that your holiday really begins. I reckon I'll have to let some air out of my tyres, mate. I reckon I'm the same, eh? I reckon this trip's just going to be fantastic. Not a lot of beach left here, Jamie. No, you're not wrong there. Yeah, I mean, that, that, this, is, this is definitely a high tide up here now, middle of the day high tide. I guess it goes to show you really got to judge it, don't you? Get this wrong and you'd be, <laughs> you'd be up against a rock and a wet place. Bit of driftwood on our right up here too, mate. Just uh, watch your tyres, buddy. It's a bit like how it was up the top of Fraser there when we had to go past all the old trees. I was just going to say that. It reminded me of that. Yeah, exactly. The shifting tides up here mean that these buried objects, one minute they're hidden and the next minute they're exposed, you've really got to keep your eye out for them. Hit these wrong and you could do all sorts of damage. Mate, looks like we're coming up on one of those creeks they've got on the map here. I'm just going to have a look, mate. The tide's going out, but this looks a little bit sketchy. I'll just jump out and have a look, mate. Hang where you are. No, don't worry. Well, it's that time of day, and I tell you, I learnt a lot of things on my trip up to Fraser earlier this year. The tide is on its way out now, but it's a big tide today, nearly two and a half metres for up here. And even though it's on its way out, you can see the damage it's done to this bank. The erosion that it's caused right up through here is almost just up to shoulder height a little bit further along. There's absolutely no way. It's worth risking doing this crossing right now. Another couple of hours, I reckon you go right around through here, but right now, the sand being as soft as it is, the tide being up, waves still coming in, and this bank, you've got no escape route. You can't get out of here if you get into trouble. This one is one you turn around from and head back the other way. Morton Island covers an area of approximately 186 square kilometres and extends for 36 kilometres from north to south and it's roughly 13 k's at its widest point. I bet you didn't know that Cape Morton, at the northeastern tip of the island, 
is the only rock outcrop on the island. The rest, well, it's sand. No amount of soft sand is going to stop us though, and we're heading down to check out one of the island's lakes. This little spot here is called Honey Eater Lake. Look, I'm not 100% sure why it's called that. I'm guessing it's because it attracts a whole heap of native bird life. It's a bit of an interesting lake. It almost could be called the perfect dam. The reason being it's formed because there's an extremely hard bottom. The water flows in, it can't seep through into the water table, so you get this lake. What it is today is the perfect spot for a photograph. This is an amazingly picturesque location, and it's little wonder that both Jamie and I are keen to grab the cameras and make the most of it. Jamie just asked me a really good question, and that is, how does he make the most in getting a photograph out of this scene? You know, I reckon nearly nine-tenths of being a good photographer is composition and learning to look at a scene and knowing what to include and what to take out. Looking at this scene, one thing that really strikes me is the look of the sky. It is absolutely fantastic today. Those clouds look great, so don't cut them out. But of course, you do want the lake in there as well. So what do we take out? Take out the foreground, put the lake at the bottom, and emphasise that big, beautiful sky that we've got here today. Well, we're just tracking across the island to the Blue Lagoon right now. Now, the Blue Lagoon is actually called a window lake. It's a pretty cool piece of geological formation as well because it's actually created when the water table is exposed to the land surface. Now, it's chock-a-block with native fish. It's a real fragile old ecosystem. And we're asked not to add any pollutants to it, like sunscreen, insect repellent, that sort of thing. It's a really picturesque part of the world down there too. You can bet I'm going to take a camera. Of them, I've got to tell you. you. Remember that movie, Blue Lagoon? I do remember the movie, The Blue Lagoon. <laughs> I wonder if it was here. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, well, I'd like to find the waterfall if it is. Yes. Well, she's not a blue lagoon like the sign says. Not blue at all, mate. <laughs> In fact, I'd go so far as to say it's a brown lagoon. What was that? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> I don't know. You made me jump, mate. You're twitchy, aren't you? Yeah. Now, whilst the Blue Lagoon doesn't look too blue right now, it actually is for most of the year. It's just that the tannins from the plant life have turned it brown. Our timing's a bit off, I guess you could say. Well, that's the Blue Lagoon. One thing I've learnt, it's not blue, it's brown. The other thing I've learnt, it's actually two things, you get one for free, is that black hats attract sand flies and white hats don't. He can stay with his sand flies and I'll stick with my white hat. You weren't overly impressed with the Blue Lagoon? No, mate, it was brown. It was brown, mate. Very why, brown. Why do they call something the Blue Lagoon if it's brown? Got me. Well, the brown lagoon, it sounds terrible, folks. What we did next was to go snorkelling in some of the most crystal clear water you will see anywhere. You enjoy that? Oh, yeah. That was a big improvement. That was huge. Over the brown lagoon. <laughs> folks, check this out. Well, we've seen what the island looks like above water. Let's go and have a look what it looks like under the water. 15 vessels have been deliberately sunk on the western side of Morton Island to form a break wall for small boats and a wreck dive and snorkel site for anyone who's keen. We weren't really too sure what to expect as we swam out to the wrecks, but I tell you what, when we got there, it took my breath away. This place is full of sea life, there's fish everywhere. And the wrecks themselves, well, they are really interesting. Swimming in and around them is just something else. It's safe diving, the kids would have a blast out here. Really, this is something else. Not something I was expecting, but very welcome. I've done some pretty good snorkelling in my time with a place called Rotnest in Western Australia. I thought that was the top of the charts, but that is fantastic. I tell you what, this is what happens on these hills when you don't get your tyre pressures correct. You see what's going on here is people are trying to give up way too much juice to get up here because their tyres are still high. They're trying to use nothing but momentum. They're getting masses of wheel spin and they're creating these great big cutouts in the track. 
I tell you what folks, do yourself a favour, because this is mighty uncomfortable, do the track a favour and let your tyre pressures down, because this is the sort of erosion that happens on tracks like this when your tyre pressures are not correct. That really is a gnarly little bit of track. Hey Jamie, you know anything about this desert place mate? Nah, the only thing I've heard, and I've heard it from a few people, is that it's really good sand boarding. Yeah, right, so it must have some pretty big sand dunes then, I'm guessing. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know if we can drive to it or we're going to walk to it. Yep, we sure did have to walk a long, long way. And it was hot, and those hills were really steep. I started to feel like Lawrence of Arabia out there. Getting onto it is actually quite tricky because it wants to go. You watch me, I'm going to dive. Okay, here we go. You ready, big fella? I'm ready. <laughs> you reckon that looks like I'm moving fast? You fly down the hill. You got some distance then? Mate, I'm over here. Where are you? I had to put the brakes on for the camera. Oh, right. <laughs> Would you think anything less of me if I went from halfway? <laughs> I reckon on the stomach's too easy, buddy. I'm gonna up the ante a bit and try and stand on this bad boy and go down. Oh, crikey. Oh, screw. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> well, that was so disappointing. Jamie's decided he's going to try and raise the bar. That was about as graceful as a ballerina hippo. Come on, hurry up. I reckon I'd give the knees a miss, Jamie. Oh, you can't see me. Whoa! He was copping so much sand in the face then. I hate sand again. I met a reader of the magazine on top of the sand dune who was kind enough to lend me his board. That's not fair! What? You had a big one! Yeah? Don't snap his board! Oh, I did it! Oh, I snapped no. his board! What a low life! Uh, there you go, buddy. Oh, no nice worries. one, yeah. Thanks, Graham. <laughs> Jamie and I suddenly had to get out of there really quickly. Uh, sorry about that, buddy. We're heading off now to check out one of the campsites that was actually recommended to us by the staff on the MyCat. I've stayed in some pretty impressive campsites in my time, but have a look at this one here. If that doesn't get you excited, I reckon I'd be checking for a pulse. Well, what's a room without a view? And I tell you what, that is a perfect view. You know, people pay a heck of a lot of money for a view like that, and I've got it for just about nothing. I reckon it's time to start dinner. Right, mate, whack those in there. The onions. Lovely jubbly. Well, you were here as a kid, is that right? Yeah. So what, that was about yeah. 90 years ago? It was a while ago now, <laughs> eh? Christ. So you haven't been back since? No, no. Back, it would have been high school days high and school maybe, days. maybe when I just got my licence. Any idea why this doesn't get the publicity that, that Fraser does? I mean, everyone talks about it. <sighs> Fraser's talked about it in WA. I reckon after we've spent this week here, yep. we'll, we'll soon know. I probably shouldn't be making any judgement calls way too early, but I do that. <laughs> I'm going to jump straight out and say it. Day one on Fraser versus day one on Morton. The uh, round goes to Morton. All right. I know right now Yes. I'm bringing the family over. I'm surprised you haven't, because you can almost see your house from here, can't you? <laughs> you can. You look across there. 
Fried onions and burgers go together like meat pie and sauce, but got a little bit of a trick here when it comes to making what I consider to be some of the best fried onions you'll ever taste, and it's so super simple. Everyone puts a bit of salt in there. Do that, whack a bit of salt in there. I hope you like them salty. Put a bit of pepper in there, of course, you put pepper in there. I think the real trick to this is doing it at the cooking stage because the pepper, as it goes in, pepper being a herb, releases more flavour. Tastes fantastic. Now here is the secret. A little bit of ground paprika. Whack that in on top. -hoo -hoo. Jamie, grab one of those onions out of there and have a try of that. I'll give us a bit more flavour, no? A oh bit? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of that. Mate, I have found the perfect use for the edge of your table here. <laughs> Look at that. Cuts an egg perfectly. Oh, yeah. A little bit of cane pepper on top of the eggs. Yes, sir. Hey? So that one there's mine, alright? Yeah. Alright, there you go. Want that one? Yeah, we'll just fold that oh, under. Something in me here. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Pull it out. Let's get a plate. That that'd, was... be, that'd be your Facebook again, mate. That's that's my wife. Do you mind if I eat now? Yeah, I've got eagle down front of me. <laughs> Burger on top. I don't know the day's coming any better. It's absolutely perfect. The view out of my rooftop tent is to die for. And now I've just cooked you the single best burgers you'll ever eat. Yeah, not bad for an amateur. Oh, <laughs> Bring on tomorrow. Look at the mess you made. I think the burgers have been a staple on just about every DVD trip I have done. I love me hamburgers out in the bush. Glenn, mate, I noticed tonight you had tea done in seconds flat. What's the secret? What do you like to cook when you're out here? Mate, simple. Steak and sausages. Keep it simple, sweetheart. The kiss... I don't yep. know if it's sweetheart. I don't know whether I should be doing that <laughs> with you and I here. But the kiss principle when you're out in the bush, I mean, it really does make sense, doesn't it? It does. It sure does, and it also makes sense to stick around because after the break, we continue to explore Morton Island. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tourer Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam, but warning it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Full Drive Supercentre you get more for less. As you've all seen folks, I haven't had a whole heap of luck catching fish on camera, but one thing I do absolutely adore is seafood and up there. Probably number one on the list is fresh oysters. I heard a bit of a rumour that there was a place on the south of the island that not only sold oysters, but farmed them. For me, that was an absolute paradise and this was one of the highlights of the trip. Check this out. There really is an amazingly harsh contrast between the east and the west coast. As soon as you hit that east coast, you can see straight away that this is the side of the island that cops all the weather. With these big breakers out to sea and a front coming through that's causing some amazing clouds, this place just looks sensational right about now. Hey, Jamie, notice this sand on the eastern beach here is way stickier. You're not wrong there. It stays wetter too, that's for sure. Doesn't it just? There's some patches where you sort of hang on and hope for the best, eh? Morton Island was one of Australia's major coastal defence bases during the war years, and look, the remains of military buildings, gun placements and even forts can still be seen today, just like this one here. This is the Rouse Battery. Their main purpose was to protect the approaches to the port of Brisbane, and at its peak, believe it or not, there were 900 troops stationed on the island.
Jamie. How cool is this spot, mate? Another island, isn't it? No, mate, this is Mirror Pool. This is just a big inland uh, bit of water here. Just sensational. Look at it. I just got no words for it, eh? I really don't. This is why I love photography. I mean, it's so atmospheric here right now. We've got what looks to be a massive weather front coming in. Great big dark clouds, but what's happening is the sun's on one side, so you're getting that light and dark, the contrast between the two, and then you get this lake, utterly stunning. This is the reason why I own a four-wheel drive vehicle, so I can get out to places like this and experience moments like this, and also to be able to bring home photos and share them with you folks, and hopefully inspire you to get out here one day and see this place for yourself. Mirapool Lagoon, Morton Island, this is unreal. Hey buddy, get a load of these trees here. They're all twisted and gnarled. It's uh, looks like something out of a fairy tale. The scenery just keeps on changing, doesn't it? From place to place. You know what? It's 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 almost more diverse than Fraser. There's there's almost more to see. Well, I don't know whether to shake my head or agree with you. <laughs> Every corner really does reveal something different. Get a load of this little bloke who was out enjoying a bit of spring sun. This is a little Gould's sand goanna. This one's only an absolute baby. They get to be monstrous in size. You see them all over the country, but they really prefer this sandy habitat. As you can see here, there's plenty of sand. He's in good condition. He's nice and fat. Look at the coloring on him. What an absolute privilege. I reckon I might just grab a couple more snaps here. Copy, Jamie. That was a sudden stop. Yeah, you'll see why in a second, mate. I reckon you should be okay. There's a bit of a branch over the track, but I think your boat will just kind of lift it up and you'll be able to slide under it. Oh, okay, no worries. Jamie, it's time to see if that truck of yours can squat down, mate. It's pretty low, mate. Yeah, yeah, it is. Keep it coming mate, keep it coming. I think you're going to fit just right. I think the boat's just going to push it aside for you. About touch, there you go. Boat just lifts it up, slices it to one side. Well done buddy. That boat was made to a purpose. Now you know why I carry a boat on top, just for the design of this. <laughs> it, was, it couldn't have done that better. <laughs> Finally we made it to the Morton Bay Rocks Oyster Farm. And just in time too, because Jamie and I are absolutely starving. The oyster farm is at the south end of Morton in a spot called Tulkerry. It's on the western side and it occupies a massive area of saltwater shallows. And I'll tell you what, I cannot wait to sample some of these oysters because I've heard they're some of the best in the country and that's a pretty big call. So this is an oyster farm, I mean, I don't see any oysters, mate. No, that's right, because we're, <laughs> we're at high tide. All the oysters are on the seabed. So oh, yeah. we're running at the moment, we're running about 50 lines. Yep. We've got three and a half thousand trays, three and a half thousand bags. It takes us from catch through to, to the plate, to the restaurants, to the seafood shops. Yep. It's two to three years. Yep. Right, so we've got about 85 acres here. Yep. Our product goes from the sea directly to the plate. How do you muster them? You use choppers? I wish they had legs and we could <laughs> drive them in there. That'd be great. <laughs> no, we have to all put them in the in yep. the boat. Yep. Every oyster's handled every three months. Yeah. So every wow. three months they've got to come in. Oh, <laughs> I can yeah. feel it yeah. already. <laughs> Wade was dead keen to show us a few of his baby oysters. For him, this is where the process all begins. So they, these are done quite well, realistically. They're, um, they're not too bad, really. Yeah. So has this been in your family for a long time, or is it? No? <laughs> You're not a 16th generation no. oyster farmer? No, no, I've killed plenty to learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that out of the way, it's time to look at some fully grown ones. You know what you do with fully grown oysters. Right, let's get them into us.
hands down, the oh, single yeah. best Thank oysters you. I've ever had. Great. Thanks for coming. Folks, if you're ever over here, I still can't get that taste out. That is just, I'm lost for words, I'm speechless. That is the best oyster I've ever had in my life and I've eaten oysters all over the place. I love oysters. We got any more? We have got more. <laughs> Morton Bay Rock's got plenty of them. <laughs> hey, Andre, a little birdie told me that you ran into a bit of a, uh, let's call it a situation. Certainly did. Would you like to share that with 55,000 people, please? <laughs> yeah, we got stuck up in um, Nolan's Brook, famous Nolan's Brook. Yep. First car in, got stuck, water up to the top of the passenger seat. Happy wife. Happy wife screaming ahead off at me. <laughs> no car organised to pull us out. Oh. Mate, it can catch out even the most prepared four-wheel drivers. And I know that Jamie and I had a similar experience on the west coast when we tried to head back and the tide caught us out. We didn't quite come unstuck like yourself. We just went fishing, making the best of a bad situation. Check this out. Jamie, get a load of this, mate. You wouldn't want a tide much higher than this. Yes, you're getting up high now, aren't it? It's even on the track. Yeah, look at this bit here. You're actually going to drive through the water. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Tell you what, when the tide comes in up here, it really comes in. You can actually see the water moving across the track. We'd better get a move on. She's a bit soft through here, Graham. Soft is an understatement, mate. You're right on the water's edge too, aren't you? You're not wrong there. Hey Jamie, it gets real narrow up here buddy. I think we might even get our wheels a bit wet. Oh really? Oh that tree looks like it's sticking out. It might catch the boat too. Yes, I'm just going to go through gently, gently. How did I go? That little Datsun can go anywhere. I've seen it now. <laughs> We're running out of track here and we got to a point where we had no real option but to dip a wheel in the water. I don't like doing that. Salt water and trucks, they just don't mix but we knew we could give them all a good hose down when we got off the island. Of greater concern was just how much further we were actually going to get, and that pretty soon became obvious that it wasn't very far. Hey Jamie, copy mate? Yo. We've got us a showstopper here buddy, I think we're going to have to let this tide go down. Can you see past me there? I can see clear as mud straight past you. Yep. What are we going to do now? Well, I'm not driving through that, that's for sure. Nah, I'll second that one. What do you reckon we pull up here on this uh, high bit of ground and, I don't know, throw the boat in, mate, see if we can't catch tea? We've got plenty of time up our sleeve, so we might as well do it, eh? You know, on an afternoon like this, being out on a boat, I really mean it when I say a fish is a bonus. There's dolphins all around us, a beautiful sunset, and the boat just gently rocking back and forth. Really, where else would you rather be? Current's quite strong down there. Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah. Is that it, bud? <laughs> hey. Where's your example, mate? Have you got one to show? No, not yet. <laughs> That's as big as the lure. Oh, well. <laughs> it's almost sensory overload out here for me, this time of evening. We've got a beautiful sunset about to happen. The water's changing colour just about every few seconds. There's dolphins playing in the water. Mother Nature just turns it on for you. It's good enough just to be out here. It really is. Captain, let's go that way. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm ready. Well, finally, the tide eventually dropped low enough and we were back on the tracks. Don't know how you're going on this track, Graham, but I'm just about going to sleep. There's so many bumps. It's unreal. It's actually a bit like being on a boat. You kind of just get rocked <laughs> to sleep. Yeah, you're right. That's exactly what it's doing to me. I'm rocking away here. I'll go to sleep in a minute. He's struggling a bit back there, falling asleep at the wheel. I reckon I've got something that'll fix him right up. Yep, <laughs> this should do it. Nothing like a bit of action before the sun goes down.
I didn't think it was possible to find a vehicle shorter than Shorty, but the blokes at Tangaluma Resort have proven me wrong. They've lent us a couple of quad bikes. This is just one of the many activities that you can do when you visit the resort. You ready to go? I'm ready to rock. Yeah, baby. You know, these quads are actually a heck of a lot easier to ride than it might look, and you pick it up really easily. Except our producer, Adam. <laughs> that was the best shot ever. This is sensational fun. Getting a bit competitive there too, old Jamie's getting right up close. He used to be pretty good on a motorbike, and I tell you what, he's not too shabby on that quad either. I tell you what, if that looked like fun, it's because it was. We had an absolute blast on those quad bikes. Glenn, what is that behind you, mate? This over here, this is my mate Scott. Scott was going to come on this trip with us, but he uh, <laughs> couldn't actually get away, and um, so we thought we'd bring him in, you know, just in principles. He's Scott, no mates. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around, folks. There's more bad jokes when we continue the remainder of our Morton Island adventure. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power, King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? King's has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter you get more for less. Have you ever stopped to think just how reptiles get on an island? I know I have. We've seen a whole heap over here, but it wasn't until we pulled into the Bulwa store that we got a bit of a surprise. Jamie and I became wildlife rescuers. Check this out. Beach driving at its absolute best. Beautiful ocean out one window and Morton Island out the other. This is fantastic. If you ever get sick of this, you really better check if you're in the right sport. Morton Island, how good is this? You know, what I've been finding driving along here on Morton is that the beaches are actually one of the easiest places to drive here. Places that I've seen people really coming unstuck, coming off the beach and trying to get onto the inland tracks. It's the exit points that people are getting all sorts of bogged on. The reasons being, these are the areas that are getting a high concentration of traffic, everyone using that one exit point. Often the corners are blind, you don't know what's coming and so you're not carrying a lot of momentum with you. It can be extraordinarily easy to come unstuck. Now look, I'm going to demonstrate just how easy it is. I'm approaching this corner now, it's a blind corner, I don't know who's coming, so I'm a little bit trepidatious, I'm coming into it now and as you can see I'm in all sorts of bother. All sorts of bother there. You try and give it a little bit more to get going again, no way, I'm not going anywhere. So as you can see it is so very, very easy to do. The real important thing here is to make sure that you can get yourself out of this situation. I'll show you how. All right, my best plan of action here is to go backwards, get back down onto the flat beach and have another crack at it. I reckon with a bit more momentum, I'll get up here no problem at all. Just gonna place these on all four wheels and reverse out of here. These Max Tracks, I tell you what, they take the hard work out of a recovery and they're really useful in situations such as this. Alrighty, here we go. The trick here is to watch your throttle control. And it's as simple as that. It really is as easy as it looks. 
Just around the corner, we decided to pick up a few supplies from the store in Bulwa, but got a little bit more than we bargained for when a local asked us if we'd do a little favour. What we've got in here is a beautiful little carpet python, about six foot long. The colouring on these things are stunning. This carpet python keeps coming back to the store. He's been moved three times so far, and every time he finds his way back. It's not a problem, except the store owner's cat and the snake, well, they just don't get along. It's nice having a mate on board, someone to talk to. I've decided to name him Stanley. Hey, Jamie, how many different landscapes has this place got? It's insane. Yeah, you're not wrong there. Looks like even a lighthouse up there. Gee whiz, this is almost a bit like when I was up in the Kimberley driving across here. It's weird. Imagine coming down there on a sandboard, eh? Wouldn't that be a... A scary thing. <laughs> I dare you. I double dare you. No time for that though. We need to find a place for Stanley, which, as soon as we were back on the inland tracks, we were able to find in no time. This is the perfect spot to let that carpet python go. As you can see, the ground is covered in leaf litter. In fact, it looks, if you use your imagination, a little bit like a carpet in here, and that's where they get their name from, from the patterns on their scales. This is the perfect place to let old Stanley go. Yep. You gonna reach in there and grab him for a bit? Yeah, I'll get him. <laughs> oh, look at him. He doesn't like the look of me much, mate. Oh, he likes that bottle in there, but He does. I'm thinking I might just try and tip him out slowly. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. Just nice and gently so he doesn't hurt himself. There you go, buddy. Oh, look, he's got himself through the, through the lid. Oh, he has too. There you go, buddy. See if he can get out of there now. That's it. Squirt yourself out backwards. Yeah, he is. He's not moving. He, he's, he's stuck. He is stuck. That's just not going to happen. I think we're going to have to lend a hand to get him out of that bottle. He's trying. You can see he's trying. Well, the idea here is that we're going to hold his head while Jamie grabs his body and tries to gently pull him through the bottle. That's him. That's him. Okay. He is wedged in there, isn't he? He is. Come on, buddy. Tell you what, there's a lot resting on me holding this snake's head. If he whips around and bites Jamie on the arm, I don't think you'll find it too funny. He knows we're helping him. Hope he feels the same way. You got a hammer? Hang on to that. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, Stanley. No, it's all right. Oh, Jesus. It's all right. What are you doing? It looks worse than what it is, all right? Okay. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. What can I say? Thank you. Off he goes. You owe us a beer. <laughs> you know, there's not too many places I go these days where I don't pack a fishing rod. As fishermen though, Jamie and I make pretty good four-wheel drivers. We'd heard the fish were biting on the northern end of the island, so we took the tinny up there and had an absolutely fantastic day, didn't mate, we mate? Absolutely brilliant. It was brilliant. Yeah. Check this out folks. Mate, get a load of the colour of this water, the colour of this sand. I'm just going to say the same thing myself. Look at that water bug. It's just incredible, isn't it? The only thing negative about this is the crowds. Look at all the people down here, mate. I don't know if we'll get parking. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the part that's really got me too. There's just no one here. It's just an oasis, isn't it? How stunningly picturesque is this part of the coast? There's hardly a breath of air out there and that ocean is as flat as a pool board. Talk about a hidden secret. This is a fantastic little channel, this one here. As you can see, it makes loading the boat an absolute breeze, especially when you've got Man Mountain over here. Yep. Can't get a better invention, but No, you can't. This boat, this boat, this motor has been a long way. Well, as long as it gets us a long way today and then back home again. Oh look, has it not? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, is that, that's only when you and Sean drive it.
You know, this stretch of coast up here is just perfect for small boats like this. There's hardly any swell, there's no wind, and well, let's hope the fish are biting. Well, we're just drifting along this weed bank here looking for flathead. I looked down in the water and there's a great big squid, so all of a sudden, plan has changed. Jamie's gone all funny in the head. <laughs> we're going to try and catch squid for lunch, buddy. What do you yep. reckon? Oh, yep, got one, buddy. Got one, it's a squid. That's a beauty. <laughs> Don't lose him. I want calamari. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I've got another one. I haven't even got my hand on the rod. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> nearly got you. That's what you call a double header on squids. There's one. Nice. Drain that bit of water out of that one. Yep. Go on, Jamie. <laughs> good yeah. squid. Oh, oh we've got some good lunch today. Well, how successful was that? Time to head in and cook up lunch. Fresh squid, fried in oil like this with salt and pepper and flour, doesn't get any better. And to eat it straight away on the beach, well, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Sensational. A lot of people throw out the tentacles when they're processing their squid or they use them for bait, they make great whiting bait, but me, Crisp these up and the last of the oil, the best bit of the squid. Try that, buddy. Good? Excuse fingers. Mm. Superb. Can't get fresher. You can't get any fresher? No. Mm. Got me back there, Jamie. Got me, Grant. Just got a little puddle while looking it up ahead here, mate. I think it's just one of those flooded areas. I don't think it's anything too bad. I'm just going to go straight through, mate. Yeah, no worries. Plenty of fresh water here anyway, so it's pretty good like that. Holy heck, where are you going? You're going under. Holy heck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate, that's, uh, that's perfectly OK. Come on through. Yeah, well, that was a bit of a shake-up. I wasn't ready for that. Struth, I tell you what, that little puddle, talk about catch me out. <laughs> Jamie and I made it through easy, and I guess it always pays to check the depth first, eh? Well, we've made it to the top of the island, and again, what an amazing spot. Up here there's a place called Champagne Pools, and it gets its name because as the waves break over the edge of the reef, they fill the pool with bubbles. The pool is also home to a heap of fish life, amazingly enough. So when you come up here and check it out, make sure you bring your snorkel. <laughs> well, folks, that was even better than it looked on camera. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> do it again. I reckon we should hit the track. Yeah. Jamie, check out that ocean, brother. My goodness. Spot on it. Look at them fish fishermen out there, right? Eh? Yeah, I think that's where the artificial reef is, mate. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that is Camp 15 there. Oh, yeah, we're coming up close on where they're going to be, eh? Yeah, they told me Camp 14, which must be this one just up here dead ahead, mate. I'm going to chuck a left-hand turn here after I sneak one more look at that ocean. Crikey. Well, what a cracking day, and what a way to finish it. A drive up the beach, under lights, with this sunset. We're just pulling into camp now, and it's not gonna be a lonely camp tonight, that's for sure. You blokes must be the Motley Crew. That's us, how are you going, Good, mate, yourself? Yeah, good, good to meet you. Yeah. G'day, buddy, how are you? Good, good, good mate, how are you going? Look at them all, how are you? High five. Low five, high five. Low five. Low five. Well, it's absolutely fantastic to meet up with all these friendly faces. This is the Motley Crew, and they're a four-wheel drive club based out of Brisbane. You reckon they enjoy being on Morton Island? Yeah, you can bet they do. Well, I tell you what, this is a bit of a shock to the system. After weeks out in the bush, that's what Jamie and I are used to, to pop into somewhere like this, it's an absolute hive of activity. And this is what it's all about. To get out in the bush with your mates and have a great time, I'm looking forward to tonight. Man, there's a cat. It's in the bag. Smells all right. 
I tell you what, how good is this? Everybody cooking up dinner together? This is what it's all about, getting into the bush with your mates and enjoying your time off. The kids are having an absolute blast. You can't learn this in school. Mate, yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. You've done well on the curry tonight, I reckon. Uh, I've got some nice steak and a bit of couscous and roast pumpkin. We're having um, steamed rice, we're having steamed vegetables, and we're also having some Carolina pork steaks. Mm, on the marinated pork steaks. Jamie, buddy, that's enough socialising. Don't you reckon you should get on to dinner? <laughs> I'm starving, mate. Look, as far as surprises go, Morton has blown me out of the water. This place, I thought it was just going to be a mini Fraser. It's got so much more to offer than that. I've spent a fantastic evening here with the Motley crew. Give yourselves a big hand. Top time. Look, folks, get over to Morton and check this place out. I've been blown away by it. Look, maybe I'll see you here, maybe I won't. You know what I'm going to say next. I'll catch you on four-wheel drive action. Laugh and stuff. <laughs> To arrange your trip to Morton Island, your ferry bookings, your permits, why don't you contact Morton Island Adventures and while you're there, say a big g'day from us at Four Wheel Drive Action. To check out the full range of activities on offer at Tangaluma, jump on their website or give them a call and make a booking. There's something for everyone to enjoy at Tangaluma. The legendary Adventure King's Big Daddy Deluxe Double Swag is Australia's favourite swag by a country mile. Now let's take a closer look at what makes it such an incredible way to go camping. If you hate the idea of claustrophobic swags, then you'll love the Big Daddy Deluxe. It measures in at a whopping 2150mm long by 1550mm wide by a metre high. That means there's plenty of room for two adults and even the littlies. We're all about making camping more comfortable for everybody, which is why we've added this 70 mm thick high density foam mattress. That means you'll have an amazing night's sleep wherever you go camping. And if the weather isn't playing ball, then no sweat. The Big Daddy Deluxe has got you covered. It starts with ultra high quality 400 GSM polycotton ripstop canvas, which is 100% waterproof and double stitched on all the seams for durability. One of my favourite parts about this entire swag is the fact that if it gets too hot outside, all you need to do is roll up each side of the canvas doors, leave the midgy proof mesh down, that way you let the breeze in but keep the bugs out. And these large storm flaps at either end are the perfect way to allow airflow at your head and your feet too. When it's cold, zip the head, foot and side canvas doors up and the Big Daddy Deluxe will stay up to 10 degrees warmer than outside temperatures, making for a toasty night's sleep when you want it. And the large PVC bucket floor which extends up 100mm from the ground Ground, on all four sides keeps your swag dry even if there's moisture on the ground. Including with every Big Daddy Deluxe is a full set of poles, pegs and ropes, which gives the swag its clever freestanding design. Once you've spent your first night in Australia's favourite and best selling swag, you'll wonder how you ever went camping without it. The Adventure King's 270 degree freestanding awning is your ticket to the quickest and easiest shade and shelter solution for your next adventure outdoors. It's packed full of features and it's built for the extremes, so we reckon it's about to become an Aussie campsite favourite. Now come along with me and I'll show you all of the incredible features that I know you're going to love. Now first up, my absolute favourite part about the King's freestanding awning is of course how quick and easy it is to set up. It's so quick in fact that you can have it fully set up in under 40 seconds. That means you and your family are protected by 8.7 square meters of shade and shelter and because it's 270 degrees it'll reach all the way to the back of your vehicle. Of course it's so quick and easy to set up because there's no legs or guy ropes involved which means there's also nothing to trip over. And the awning material is made from lightweight but super strong 280 GSM PU coated ripstop canvas. It's UPF 50 plus rated and 100% waterproof. So it's perfect for year round camping. Our engineers have even gone through all the effort of stitching on high quality SPS zips along the edges of the awning here. That's for the optional awning wall attachments which you can use to completely enclose your campsite. There's also D-loops at the end of each arm and in the middle of the canvas 
so you can safely secure it to the ground during high winds with the included awning straps. As I mentioned earlier, this thing is built for the extremes. As you can see, the entire awning has been meticulously designed from the ground up by our very own in-house engineers to be able to withstand the toughest conditions that you'd ever come across anywhere in Australia. The arms are made from high quality box tube aluminium, which is incredibly strong but lightweight. And when you combine that with the heavy duty gusseting in between each run, you get an insane amount of strength. How strong you might ask? Well, we don't exactly muck around when it comes to R&D of our products. We put it up against 90 km an hour winds from the wash of a helicopter. And well, the results speak for themselves. It also gets an insane amount of strength from the laser cut, heavy duty stainless steel bracket at the hinged end here. Now this piece holds everything together and it also mounts directly to the included fitting kit via high tensile stainless steel bolts and nylon locking nuts. And installing it onto your rig should only take you about an hour. Now speaking of the fitting kit, check out how tough our engineers have made these feet. They're 4mm thick powder coated steel and they're completely reinforced throughout. So you know they'll stand up to just about anything the weather can throw at it. And of course packing it up is just as quick as setting it up. And when it is fully packed up, it's completely protected inside of the heavy duty PVC transit bag with a loose fit. So it's super easy to zip it up closed. Feature packed and ready for any outdoor adventure, the Adventure King's 270 degree freestanding awning will get you camping better than ever before. If easy access to icy cold beers while you're out camping is high up on your priority list, then you need to get your hands on the new and improved Adventure King's 85 litre upright fridge. This incredible upright fridge uses the same industry leading genuine CCOP BD35F compressor found in high end fridge freezers, so you know it'll run efficiently and reliably for many years to come. The entire fridge is cased in a tough powder coated steel body that extends all the way around the compressor to keep it nice and protected while you're driving. The clever upright design and the reversible front opening door allows you instant access to cold food and drinks, making it the perfect addition to any caravan, camping, touring or full drive setup. And speaking of the reversible door, we've even centered the latch so you don't have to move it when you want to reverse your door. With a massive 85 litre internal fridge capacity, including the 6 litre freezer compartment, there's more than enough room in here for long off-grid trips while still being compact enough for overnighters or day trips. We've even added an automatic internal LED light and a new digital temperature control system. So you can set your fridge temperatures anywhere from 10 degrees Celsius all the way down to zero degrees at the touch of a button. It has super thick insulation and a heavy duty magnetic seal to make sure the temperature stays at exactly what you set it to. The freezer door even has a magnetic lid so when you open it up, it'll stay put so you can get to what's inside. The external dimensions are 475 mm wide, 560 mm deep and 630 mm high. Plus installation couldn't be easier, they come with these handy little L brackets so you can secure it to pretty much anywhere you want. We're so confident in this fridge that we've backed it with a massive nationwide 5 year warranty so you can explore with confidence and peace of mind thanks to our 7 day a week support network. The Adventure King's 85 litre upright fridge is taking the 4 wheel drive and camping scene by storm. And with all these high quality components and features that Aussie campers absolutely love, it's easy to see why. So get in quick and secure yours today. This is the toughest aluminium rooftop tent we have ever built. The brand new Adventure Kings Grand Tour at Mark III. We've gone back to the drawing board and listened to your valuable feedback. Our in-house engineers have completely redesigned our most incredible rooftop tent and made it better and stronger than ever before. And let me tell you guys, this thing has been engineered for the extremes. First up, we've integrated an all new extruded aluminium frame and an incredibly tough aluminium honeycomb sandwich panel, which is integrated into both the base of the rooftop tent and the ceiling. Utilising this manufacturing process has allowed us to drastically increase the structural integrity of the Grand Tourer Mark III. Not to mention the fact that we were also able to make the overall dimensions incredibly compact for a modern, slimline design. 
The new extruded aluminium frame is 100% custom designed by our engineers and has allowed us to utilise built-in accessory channels for added strength, durability and ease of installation of awning brackets, instant en-suites, optional crossbar kits and much more. And that new aluminium honeycomb sandwich panel is super lightweight but has an insane amount of strength and flex. So if you're crawling up low range tracks, hitting ridiculously corrugated roads or going for a beach run, you can be sure that this thing will stand the test of time no matter what you get up to. Not to mention the fact that this incredible honeycomb sandwich panel doubles as insulation so you can stay cozy warm in winter and nice and cool in summer. And as you can see along the edges here, we've incorporated an incredibly tough automotive grade rubber pinch weld seal. So as you can see, I've got two sample plates of the extrusion here to show you guys how it all works. The rubber pinch weld actually sits inside of this groove of the extrusion here. And as the rooftop tent closes, it seals the entire unit together. And this right here is the third layer of protection. So no water or dust could ever get past this point. Now, every single join on the Grand Tourer Mark III has been sealed with a polyurethane automotive grade sealant which makes it impervious to water and dust ingress. So no matter what you get up to on your weekends, it'll stay watertight and dustproof. The newly upgraded heavy duty gas struts are rated at a thumping 550 newtons each, meaning you can easily open the rooftop tent even with a bit of gear on top. Plus they're 316 marine grade stainless steel, giving them incredible corrosion resistance. A must if you camp on the beach or live near the coast. And for an added bit of safety while the rooftop tent is fully set up, you get this included heavy duty telescopic lockout pole, which slots into these two points here to make sure that the rooftop tent stays taut no matter what the weather is doing. We've even gone the extra mile and made the nuts and bolts in the included DIY fitting kit out of high quality 316 marine grade stainless steel. So you'll never have to worry about rust or corrosion. The included Grand Tour Mark III awning poles are now double the thickness and they slot into this heavy duty retainer which sits inside the extrusion for an incredible amount of strength. These new awning poles have been specifically designed to be able to flex in strong winds, which will take pressure off the awning fabric and reduce excess flapping. Well, there's simply no doubt about it. The Adventure King's Grand Tourer Mark III is built for the extremes. So no matter what you get up to or what the weather has in store, this beast of a rooftop tent will stand the test of time and get you camping better than ever before. If you've got adventure in your blood and your favourite thing in life is searching to see what's over that next hill, then the Adventure Kings MT1 camper trailer has been built just for you. This amazing, modular and highly customisable camper trailer hasn't just been built with camping in mind. We've designed it to be highly capable off-road, so it'll follow you anywhere. From Cape York to the Simo, from Coffs Harbour to Tassie, from the Victorian high country to the Kimberley. Wherever you want to go, the Adventure Kings MT1 will take you there in style and comfort. In this video, join me for a detailed look at the design features that make the MT1 built for the extremes. This is only one small part of what makes the MT1 the ultimate adventure trailer. So please make sure you watch our detailed walkthrough videos on lifestyle features, accommodation options, 12 volt electrical system, suspension brakes and chassis, and the incredible design and R&D process behind each and every trailer. The last thing you want when you're halfway along a tough track is to get stuck because you're towing a low riding sled of a trailer. That's the last thing you'll have on your mind whenever you're towing the MT1. Just check out that clearance. Sitting level, there's 585 millimetres of clearance under the drawbar and the chassis thanks to the lifted coil sprung dual shock independent suspension system. At the rear, the MT1 has a departure angle of 32 degrees. That means the trailer can comfortably handle dropping down big rock steps or following your four wheel drive up and over big obstacles and through deep ruts. And while we're talking clearances, let's jump underneath and have a look. There's a huge 330 mil of clearance underneath each independent suspension trailing arm, which is built out of 60 by 60 millimeter, five millimeter thick powder coated steel with a three millimeter laser cut bash plate welded to the bottom. And because the suspension is independent, there's even more clearance in between the suspension arms, 530 millimeters up to the 100 litre water tanks built in bash plate. Of course, there's so much more I could tell you about that amazing suspension system, like the Australian design, specially valved Oztec 63 millimeter shock absorbers, the ability to wheel align the trailer for tire longevity, or the ultra heavy duty polyurethane bushes. But I'll save all that info for the suspension brakes and chassis video. Don't miss it.
Making the most of that clearance is a set of 265 75 16 mud terrain tires mounted to these beautiful 16 by 8 zero offset alloy wheels. That's a 31 inch mud tire in the old money. So you'll have heaps of clearance and no shortage of traction in just about any off-road situation. The trailer has also been specifically designed with a wheel track of 1,558 millimetres, which is very close to most four-wheel drives on the tracks today. In practical terms, that means the trailer's tyres will follow the same line as the tow vehicles, minimising drag in soft terrain such as sand and mud. The toughest trailer in the world is next to useless off-road if you haven't got the right coupling to match. And for those serious about wanting the best, there's the genuine Cruise Master DO35 three and a half ton drop-on hitch. The platinum standard in off-road couplings, this amazing piece of engineering uses a two-stage ADR compliant locking mechanism to connect to the included forged tow pin, instantly and positively locking your trailer on at the push of a button as soon as the jockey wheel is raised off the ground. The MT1 has the type of off-road ability that other trailers can only dream of. And the best part is, with a base tear weight of just 870 kilos, you'll barely notice it's there. Even if you load it to its aggregate tear mass of 1,500 kilos, it's still hundreds of kilos lighter than many forward and rear fold camper trailers on the market. So your trailer won't hold you back from where you want to go, even if you've got a sedan, a station wagon, or an SUV. You're going to love where your Adventure Kings MT1 camper trailer will take you. And the best part is, when you get there, you'll be geared up to camp in style and comfort. Don't miss the rest of our detailed walkthrough videos to learn more about this amazing camper trailer. Got a question you want answered? We'd love to help. Give us a call seven days a week on 1800 88 39 64.